So what habits have you developed that you feel like maybe let's just talk in the last year, you know, that have really kind of accelerated your success? I wouldn't say necessarily anything's changed within the last year. Okay. Uh, these are habits that are, that are, I guess, have been a part of me for a long time. Uh, one of them we talked about earlier, and I'll, I'll bring these guys up to speed. Um, it's decision making. Okay. Uh, one of the most important things I can do for my summer is before the summer starts, make all of my decisions that I'll have to make or that will come up during the summer. Some of those decisions are what time will I wake up every day? Will I exercise every day? What kind of foods will I eat every day? And those are some of the lifestyle things. But yeah. from the sales side of things, well, guess what? In July and in August, we're going to wake up and it's going to be 120 degrees outside. Yeah. And it would be an easy decision to make on that day that it's 120 degrees. To go to the pool. I want to go to the pool today. Yeah. But if you've already made the decision that every day I am healthy enough to go, I'm going to be on the doors, you're on the doors. It doesn't matter if it's 130, you're on the doors. You also make the decision when you park the car, you get out of the car. Yeah. You don't park the car and text someone, park the car and drive around and I better scope this neighborhood. Scope the area more. out, that's <laughs> yeah. crap. Never scope area, just knock it. Oh, um, I, for, I forgot to go to the gas station for something. <laughs> it's exactly. Like, you know, there's I was, there's I, plenty of excuses that you can make the decision to make, but if you make the decision just to get out of the car, that, that's one of the most important decisions too. Yeah, I always say the yeah. hardest door is the, the car first. door. first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that, it's even yeah. better. Yeah, yeah the okay. hardest door is the car door. Yeah, that's true. Um, so what do you do? Like, what are some of the things like your routines that's maybe yeah. different that you like, Hey, I wake up, I do this, I do this. Like, yeah. What's yours? Absolutely. So first thing I wake up in the morning to my daughter, uh, she wakes she, me she's up. Your alarm clock? She wakes me up about seven, seven thirty okay. every morning. Dad, get up. The sun's out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I get up, uh, go in the kitchen, make her French toast. Okay. That's what she wants every morning with Nutella. Yeah, my daughter's a dinosaur pancake person. Is she? Okay. <laughs> Daddy, that's not a dinosaur. <laughs> like, I tried. <laughs> I, I better not start with that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we make her French toast, get her ready. Uh, after she, it, While she's eating, I'll go hop in the shower. Uh, well, I'll, I'll shower, get out, get ready for the day, uh, review the training I'm going to give that morning to my guys. Guys will get to my house at about uh, 9 a.m. We'll go through our training. About 10 o'clock, we're out the door on the way to the doors. I uh, typically stop at the gas station, grab an energy drink, because I've found across the years one of my weaknesses is the car door. And so if I can pound an energy drink on the way out to the area, as soon as I'm parked, I'm like ready to get out of the car. Yeah. And so I don't have to make any excuses, and I've already made my decision, right? So I park the car, get right out, get onto my first door, and I, I have to be on the first door uh, before 11 o'clock. If I'm not, I'm mad at myself. It's like a sin. It's a big sin, yeah. yeah. And depending on how far the drive is, I give myself that window. So it's like 10.45 to 11 o'clock. Uh, knock till 3.30 every day. I take lunch from 3.30 to 4.30, back on the doors right then. And I go till past a little bit past dark. A little bit past dark, cool. Yeah. So how do you maintain your energy throughout that day when really you had technically your French toast in the morning, or you know what I mean, or whatever, your energy drink, uh -huh. a lunch, Yep. Like how do you how do you maintain like do you get hungry or do you do, do you pack lunch? You know, you... in this this is uh, I guess maybe something unique about me maybe not. When I'm doing something, I'm 100 percent there. It's like you don't even think about food. I don't think about food. I don't even think about the bathroom sometimes. Yeah. Like as soon as dark hits and I I get back in the car, sometimes I'm about to wet myself because I then realize I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, it's wild. <laughs> so, yeah, it's bad. And so, yeah, I don't think about bathroom. I don't think about water, which I should because I probably get dehydrated sometimes. I don't think about any of those things. It's almost like I'm you just, just trained your body to be so focused it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so what do you believe that you think or like other people would think is insane? Like what do you, what do you believe or think or do that other people might look at it and be like, that is just so weird. Why do you do that? Or why do you think that? Honestly, I don't know that there's really anything that outlandish that I believe. It's just I do a lot of really small and really simple things extremely consistently and extremely well. 
And I think doing those small and simple things so consistently, so diligently, and so well takes me to another level. So it's not, here, I drink this magic potion and I sell 700? No. Because <laughs> a lot of people ask me that. They're like, what's the secret? Like his pitch must be different, yeah. right? And then they no. watch you and what do they notice? That's the same thing I say. Oh, why did, <laughs> why did you do 10 today? Uh, yeah. I said the same thing you did. So, so I guess... What what do you think makes like what's your edge like what makes you different if you're doing the same you're saying the same pitch yeah doing those little things yeah why what's the X factor like why do you think some people do 120 in a summer and average that mm-hmm. versus 700 where is your edge uh, I think a lot of it is will like the power of my will is stronger than your power of will that's what I would tell a 120 level rep. So how does somebody find their will? Well, either they find it or they don't. And that's what separates people. Some people want it, some people are hungry, and some people coast. I'm not someone that's comfortable coasting because I don't know what I'm gonna coast into. (laughs) I wanna be in control, I wanna step on the gas, I wanna steer, I wanna drive, I need need the power. I think of like, you drop like a balloon in the water in the ocean, and it just kind of is like, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, I can't. <laughs> where's it gonna end up? I need a speedboat. Yeah, no, that's yeah. interesting. I like that. Um, so, what would you most like to change about yourself or improve on? Where do you feel like, yeah. hey, I need to get better at this? I'd say organization. I, I'm not extremely well organized, and I think that's something that I could work on and definitely build. I think a lot of sales guys have that same weakness. I think you're right. So what do you feel like your biggest strength is as a leader? Now let's kind of go into like leadership. Yeah. Like you are managing 360 people. Uh-huh. Well, in a sense, if you're not organized, it's like, well, wouldn't that just kind of fall apart? Fortunately, I have a lot of people I can delegate to. Yeah. So do you uh, feel which, like that's... Which a, also makes a strong leader. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. That's a strength of yours. It's like you yeah. found... You can't by yourself go to 360. Right. I mean, obviously your phone would be going nuts. You'd be... Yeah reps wouldn't have their shirts, they wouldn't be missing, you know what I mean? Right. So what what, yeah. do you, what do you find that's been a strength of yours to, to make you a leader that has been able to be capable of managing that many people? So there's a few things. First thing I'd say is that I am willing and aware enough to admit that I am not the smartest guy in the room. I know that my managers and my regional managers under me, I know they have good ideas, I know they're organized, I want to hear what they have to say and I want to implement it. And so I let them. And some of them I just let let loose. I say, do your thing. Let me know how I can help. And I think that that's a quality of a good leader too, is to let their, exactly, teach them correct principles, let them govern themselves, right? Yeah. Uh, Another thing that I think helps is to lead from the front lines. Uh, You look at, I'm a big fan of war. Not that I want to go to war, but <laughs> about Trump, the right? history. It's like Korea, know. we got some missiles coming. Yeah, like, it's like, uh, I, I love the history of war, uh, okay. war tactics, different things like that. And one of the one of the ages I really like is kind of medieval times. And you'll notice that a lot of the battles that happen when the king's sitting on his throne behind his wall in his castle, how do they fight versus when the king's on the fort, the front front lines with them, right? Yeah. What's, what's the mentality of the soldiers there when the king's on the front lines? Oh, it's kind of like, well, if he dies, we die. If we die, he dies. Yeah, they're, they're going to go balls out, right? Yeah. Language? Anyway, <laughs> and so that's my idea. Like, will I go around? Will I travel? Will I train? Sure. But guess what? I'm going to knock, too, and I'm going to outperform most of my reps, if not all of them. Because if I can do it with all of my responsibilities, then a first-year rep whose only responsibility is himself... Why can't he do it too? Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like you have literally no excuse. Right. 